I'm back with another video. Today we got Chinese mythology creation story explained in animation. It's on both screens. Without further ado, let's get straight into the video. In the cosmic chaos, there was an egg. Inside the egg lay Pangu. He was the first god, the first giant, and simply first. Laying inside the egg, he began to form heaven and earth. Every day he would grow, and every day the heavens would rise 10 feet higher, and the earth would grow 10 feet thicker. In the beginning, it was small, and chaos still ensued all around. But each day, as Pangu grew, so did heaven and earth. After 18,000 years, Pangu was finally finished. Heaven was now extremely high, and the earth was incredibly deep. Some say this was the formation of yin and yang, while others would say that yin and yang came first, putting order into the earth, and that it was only from that order Pangu first began to grow and eventually emerge. As all things, except immortals, must die, so did also Pangu. But with his death, creation bloomed for his body became everything we see around us. His left eye became the sun, while his right became the moon. From the strands of his beard, the stars were formed. His four limbs and five extremities became the edges of the earth and the five mountains. His blood formed the rivers, while his breath became the winds and clouds. His flesh turned to earth, and the hairs on his head became the plants and trees to grow in it. Metals and rocks appeared from his teeth and bones while his semen and marrow became jade and pearls. Finally, his sweat and fluids gave the earth rain so that it could hold life. Perhaps Pangu was also covered in mites and insects, and it was from then that became the first humans. But on that point, Nuwa would like to disagree. The goddess Nuwa saw the earth and heaven that Pangu had formed with his dying body and his final breath. She found it so beautiful that she decided to live there. But after a while, she became lonely and decided to make people. She took up the yellow earth and began to form the people with her hands. The work was tiring and exhausted her. Eventually, she decided to grab a leather cord and simply drag it through the earth, shaking off the pieces of earth from it and creating the rest of the people that way. Now, she no longer had to be alone. But after a while, the humans began to die, so Nuwa started to form new people again. She knew she could not be bothered to keep forming new people constantly, so instead she gave humans a way to reproduce. After this, she withdrew, being content with what she had made. Little did she know that her work was not done yet. Many years later, a terrible flood passed over the entire land, and only two people survived a brother and a sister. Both of them wanted to reproduce and ensure that humanity would survive. However, they felt great shame because they knew they were siblings and should not intertwine. They called to the heavens, but received no answer. So they decided to do two tests. First, they went up a high mountain, rolling down two millstones, one on each side of the mountain. Only if the stones landed next to each other could they then marry. The stones rolled down the height of the mountain, and at the bottom, both were lying next to each other. They had passed the first test, and now felt comfortable getting married. Now, they went to separate locations and made fires. If the smoke from the fires intertwined with each other, they could have children and would be able to repopulate the desolate earth. After the fires had been made, both the brother and sister looked up into the sky. Slowly, the smoke that had risen separately from both their fires had become one. The brother and sister were sure they had the blessings of heaven, and so they had children. However, when the sister finally gave birth, it was not the child they had expected. Instead, a spherical piece of flesh had been born. They were distraught. Had they misread the signs? For nine months they had waited for a child and instead received this abomination. They wept together. And as they wept, Nuwa heard them and appeared before them. 
She took a knife and cut open the spherical piece of flesh, informed not one child, but many. After humanity had been created and was reproducing, the Jade Emperor, Lord of Heaven, sent three emperors to rule over them. The first he sent them was Tianguan, meaning ruler of heaven. He would bring happiness, freedom, and riches. The second was Di Guan, the ruler of earth, who would judge over the people and their actions. The third was Shui Guan, the emperor of water, who would control the rivers and overcome diseases. These three emperors were worshipped all over China. When the Jade Emperor saw humans on earth and how they were living, he decided to give them some rules on food. He called to him the dung beetle and told it to tell the humans to eat once every three days. However, by the time the dung beetle had traveled back down to the humans, he had confused the message and instead told the humans to eat three times a day. The humans feasted away, gorging themselves with food, and as a result began to excrete a vast amount. At this time, heaven and earth were closely linked, held together by great pillars. Now, why haven't I seen a scarab beetle? I never seen one IRL. Pillars. The Jade Emperor was horrified by how revolting the humans were and could not stand the stench. So he separated heaven and earth to get away from the smell. To punish the beetle, he made it eat the dung that the humans excreted. Please note that in this video, many creation myths have been fused, so check the description if you want more information about this. Many creation myths have been fused. Chinese mythology is filled with emperors, some which are based on real historical emperors who have been mythologized, and others who are simply gods that are called emperors. All of China's emperors were seen as gods, just as the pharaohs in Egypt were but it can be hard to determine which emperors were gods of mythology and which were based on historical rulers. If you want to discover more captivating Chinese myths, please check out our book, Chinese Mythology. Interesting. The most interesting part about the, the story is the man wasn't he like a giant pretty much? And then how his hair became the, and his bodily fluids became the rain. And like, if we looking at that metaphorically, uh, you know, like how as above, so below, like you look at your eyes, your, your iris, and then you cut a, a onion or a carrot it literally looks the same way and then the colors of the fruits and vegetables just like pertain to the colors of your chakra from your root sacral solar plexus heart throat third eye and crown it's like if you notice you look at the fruits the color it pertains or the shape like a pear so you can see what that can possibly repair being your what is it your, your liver it, you know what i'm talking about look at the organs and go and look at all the fruits and vegetables it's insane it's in your face a banana i got the bbc <laughs> but nah for real it's as above so below as within so without you go and look at the veins on a leaf it's just like your veins, your hand. It's the same thing. Like, it's all around you. And you take it for granted or you really just don't pay attention. And if they look at on a molecular level with some scope and the inside of you, it's like literally like some like galaxy, like down to your, your biofield that emanate like the flower of life, your Taurus is... It's like some geometric shapes and it's like everything pertains to one another. So I'm saying that to say, you know how your body is composed of what, over 150 trillion cells, which are cells. What if inside you, every single, I mean, they prove everything is a conscious, everything is alive. You can have your field in the front yard 
every single solitary blade of grass in that field is conscious and aware with its own frequency and they all work together as a unit they all work as one um what if your sales because they're they are conscious they are aware i don't know if you're aware of the double slit experiment well um photons <sighs> how i word it is humans behave like photons when observed what does that mean it means okay they put these particles or these photons do some accelerator thing or something and they monitor it and when they monitor it 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 does one thing let's go with that and then when they change the conditions of it and this can't detect as being observed it act as true it expresses itself in its true true form like similar like humans like how i say um humans behave like photons when observed when you all alone that's the real you and the face that you don't show anyone for whatever reasons it may not go against social norms or your jokes or whatever you really how you how you are but if you let them if someone lets you know that you're going to be plastered and broadcast to millions of people you're going to change you're going to straighten up you're going to that's as above so below as within so without so like with these photons and you are a light so you are condensed sunlight that's what give everything like a solid kind of and I think that's when a vibration is, is that when a vibration is very fast that make things like solid and when it's slow, that's when you can, or is it backwards? I need to freshen up on that. But, um, damn, I know I'm very aware here, but everything pertains to one another. How I'm talking about your sales. What if all your sales, it's like you, you know, like how it's me over here and you where you are and you conscious and aware and you your own individual guy having your own temporary human like experience and you got your own dreams and aspirations and fears or whatever and i have my own as well and but yet in the collective conscious as well as the collective unconscious we still all connected in this grid so it's like what are your sales literally just like you and they very tiny you need some so what if the body of being earth what if we all just our own cell inside of an organ of something of a God-like being? And then once you, once you got to go, damn, some things I learned, I swear it'd be perishable. Like, I got to freshen up on them. Like, what's it? You got to go. Was it you got to go 33 times the speed of sound to leave Earth's gravitational pull? So once, what if you leave that and you see like these stars in the water, you know how as above, so below. And what if you literally just a sail inside of an organ? Because that's what make up of the organ, right? Like inside of there. And we're pretty much just something small and one gigantic God-like being. That's kind of what it reminded me of when he's talking about his teeth became the, the rocks and stones and... I mean, it's interesting, though. Um, I'm definitely about to get back on my... I'm forgetting. I think it was 33 times the speed of sound. So, that was like 33 Mason. Don't you hate that when you learn something? You proud of it. You At the end of the day, you... A few... Whatever later, and you ain't been paying no attention for real. And now you done forgot it. Or well, at least I think, I, I think that's correct, though. But that's it for this video. Let me know what you guys think. I wanted to find a video that's longer, that's more, that got more to it. This wasn't enough. Like something like 17 minutes that got, I don't know. But that's it for this video. Don't forget to like the video. If you like the video, comment, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications. DM me the link via X, formerly known as Twitter. Let me know what you want me to react to next or what you want me to talk about. Follow me on Twitch, Kick and Rumble. So the Chinese mythology was snakes. Um, okay, the Japanese Chinese. What Koreans next? I right, man, us versus them. I'll see y'all in the next video, man. I'm out.